translations are a type of transformation where effectively you grab the shape and you slide it horizontally or vertically or a combination of those two. So it doesn't change what it looks like, it just changes where it is on the page. Say for example, we had a triangle that looked a little like this. Okay, so this is shape A, and we want to translate it by the vector minus three, two. What this means, so when you see a vector when we're talking about translations, it means the top value is the x value and the bottom is the y, and it's how much you're gonna move in those directions. So in this case, it says minus three on the top, that corresponds to the x value, as in we're gonna move it three units to the left. The reason it's left is because the negative x direction is toward the left. And then the two on the bottom represents the y, which means we're gonna move it up two places, okay? So what I would do is I would pick a point on the shape that you're trying to move, so for example, if I pick this point and then just try and move that point alone. So we know that we're moving three to the left. So one, two, three, and then we're gonna move three, uh, sorry, two up. So one, two. So I now know that this point is here. And now I just need to redraw the shape that we originally had. So you can see the two shapes are identical, but it's been moved, it's not got bigger, it's not rotated, anything like that. It's just been slid to a different position. Rotations are a little bit trickier. The reason being, there are several different parameters or conditions that they need to give you. The first of which is the center of rotation. What point we're gonna rotate it around, okay? Um, the direction you're rotating, so, clockwise or anti-clockwise, so remember, if you're looking at sort of the, the clock and it's at 12, 12 p.m., the, the um, hands are going to move to the right, effectively. That's clockwise, so sort of that direction is clockwise, this direction is anti-clockwise. And also, you need to know how far to rotate it. So, are you going to rotate it 180 degrees? Are you going to rotate it 270 degrees, etc.? So, you need an angle of rotation. So say, for example, we have this triangle here and we wanted to rotate this by 90 degrees. So rotate by 90 degrees. So ticking off what we need, we've got an angle of rotation. Anti-clockwise. So we've got a direction of rotation. And then it says around the point one one so we've got a center of rotation we've got all of the conditions that we need so first port of call let's find the point one one well that's there nicely on this one it ends up on the shape then we're thinking we're rotating anti-clockwise so it's going to sort of go this way and we're going 90 degrees which remember 90 degrees looks like that so imagine sort of rotating from there to there that's 90 degrees we're going to do the same here what you're going to do is you're going to stick some tracing paper on top, draw your little center of rotation, draw around your shape, and then hold either your finger on the point where our center of rotation is or your pencil, and then slide the, the tracing paper so that the shape moves like that. And then we end up here and we can trace our shape back on so that we know where it ends up. So our final shape has gone from where it originally was to here that I'll just do in a slightly different color so that you can see it a little bit clearer. It ends up there. If you found this video useful, why not try the Topic exam on our learning platform? Here, you can assess your knowledge and get instant feedback on how you've done. So answering a series of questions of all different styles within this topic, I can get feedback straight away in both written format and video format so you can see here there's a quick explanation of how I should have solved this problem and then a video solution where an expert will talk you through exactly how to solve the problem.